try to fix that part. You can't just just be annoyed about the Vancouver prices. So try to try to change uh, your surroundings. Don't talk about oh uh, why everything is so expensive. Try to see how you can actually make it the, make more money. You know that mentality, just that switch of the mentality is very very important. I think. So welcome back everyone, today we're sitting down with Andrew Aziz. Once again, it's been a while we spoke. Andrew, welcome mm-hmm. back on the podcast, good to have you here again. And look forward to talk about trading and uh, your journey as well. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk with you again. Awesome, tell me a bit more kind of what happened since we last spoke. I think it's been a year, maybe a bit more than that, but tell me kind of what's new with you, what things you're doing these days and... Did we talk when I climbed Everest or was it before Everest or after Everest? Uh, no, we talked before that, yeah. Before that, so I climbed Everest. I think that was the biggest thing that I did in, uh, in my life, uh, personal life. I climbed uh, Mount Everest in May 2023, uh, May 19. And that was a quite an achievement of journey. And then I went to Antarctica and I climbed uh, and peak in Antarctica, which was uh, super cold and interesting, also a very beautiful place. So these are the things that happened with me. Uh, trading wise, also really amazing. Market is making all time highs every single day in the last quarter. Yeah, I mean, pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely been a good environment for trading as well. Tell me regarding trading, has, have things changed? Are you still trading the same kind of way you've been trading in the past or how do you kind of manage that? Yeah, exactly. So I am still day trading in stock market uh, shares. I incorporated a little bit of options trading in my um my, my swing trading, but I'm still generally trading, uh, day trading stocks, has always been in the last 15 years, 14 years almost. And uh, I mean, my account share size, my account size is bigger now, share size is a little bit bigger, but uh, when I'm looking back at my trading, still the same fundamental uh, rules that I was tra- using on day trading, I still do. Like uh, I'm a momentum trader, I scalp, I uh, look for short term momentums and um, yeah, I mean, if you keep that fundamental of your trading uh, uh, same and solid, you can just build your uh, account around that. You don't need a lot of changes. Sometimes you adapt to the environments, but the fundamentals of your trading rules and strategies are, I think, the ones that uh, should stay with you. Yeah, totally. Might be a tough question to start with, but I'm sure you've seen people over the years who've been trading, maybe they're trading the same thing like you. They kind of trade for a while and they're gone. They don't trade anymore like in a different business. What do you think makes it that people stay in trading for many, many years and some people kind of quit after a couple of years? What is that factor that makes you trade for the long term? Well, let me tell you something, Ethan. Uh, you probably heard that the 90% of the day traders fail. And this is the statistics that, you know, they try to say that's impossible, that uh, negativity around day trading. Um, I don't think they have any specific data on that, uh, <clears throat> but I think I know there was a law court. Uh, uh, there was a court back in maybe around 20 years ago, and uh, some of the brokers had to release some of their information, and then they realized that yes, it is about like 80 to 90 percent of the day traders failed after six months to one uh, one year. However, you know, if you look at it uh, at other businesses, like they also have a very high percentage of failure. Like I think on businesses, uh, like restaurants, I've heard that uh, after two years, 90% of them fail and, you know, they move on. So day trading, just because it has very easier uh, entry, the barriers to entry, much easier. You can just open an account to fund it, you know, get this uh, more wide. But it's not really that different from uh, other businesses or other careers or the entrepreneurs who start something and they fail. Uh, it's not it's not super crazy the ninety percent failure. You f- you feel like that failure rate is mostly in the beginning, or because those traders who've been trading for a long time, then they realize they don't want to do it anymore. It's like too much work for them. Why do you think that that happens over time? I think uh, uh, going back to actually your previous uh, previous question, I think that the, the turnover is high, but people come come back. What I see here is people usually come around six months. And then after six months, they leave. There are those early losses. They can't handle that. And then they move. The people who pass that uh, hockey stick curve, they eventually get it. And most of our traders, all of them had this hockey stick uh, curve that, you know, the initial losses, they go into the really that despair uh, time that uh, they're desperate. And then a lot of them quit. But the, the ones that who really stick a little bit longer, they can actually make it as a consistent trader. 
um, <clears throat> six months, I think, is, is a good time. People give it a time, and that's okay if you move away and, you know, come back maybe in a different uh, mindset or when the market maybe changed after uh, some time and it's easier to make money. Definitely, we have some times that are a little more difficult to make money. Uh, the market is not volatile or, you know, the environment is just not favorable for retail trading. So it's, it's good to take some time off and then come back. I'm curious to hear how you manage the, the traveling and especially like going to countries where you don't even have access to internet, you're climbing a mountain. How do you manage that trading with that? Do you kind of take time off and not trade or do you kind of try to manage both? I always have my traveling station with me. So it's one laptop and two screen and a bunch of uh, wires and stuff. So I always have it. I have one of these travel bags that I carry uh, and it fits really well everything in there. It has also wheels so you don't have to really put it backpack. I don't like backpacks. Um, internet is uh, a little bit of a tricky part because, you know, it's really, really uh, toss coin with the internet. So I have stayed in five-star hotels, luxury hotels that my internet has been horrible. Also got really fast, super fast internet on top of the mountain. Like in the mountain, Hajj in the refuges, I got some live streaming, so it's amazing. So it's really a toss coin in the internet. But I think overall, uh, internet is getting much, much, much better. So I have less and less difficulty with getting a good internet. But I'm always carrying my uh, laptop trading station with me. I'm not really super efficient when I'm traveling with the, cap uh, with the, with the uh, traveling station. But it's good for a quick scalp, like, uh, you know, a smaller share size to get be in the market. So whenever I have time, I really just open up. It takes like five minutes and then you trade for 45 minutes and then you're back. You know, you travel a lot. So I'm sure you are, right now you're in Georgia. So uh, you got to have your office with you in case there is needed. Totally. Sometimes you can have the whole office with you, but it's the fact of you just cannot place trades because like you're doing something else. It might be like outside. Or you, you don't want to necessarily like, like open up your charts in the middle of the day in a cafe somewhere. Like you want to be able to enjoy the, the place you're at also. Do you try to arrange where you have like days where you do more stuff outside, where it's like the weekend, for example, where you're not trading or? Uh, not really. I, when I'm traveling, the, uh, my focus is the travel. So, you know, my focus is not trading hours. So if I can make the time for trading, I would do it. But it's not that, uh, you know, I, I, I stop my traveling just for the trading because I could do this in Vancouver office as well. So. I usually plan my life around the activity that I have in that country. And if the, I can find two, three, one hour usually for trading, good. If not, I, I skip the trading day. I know we've discussed this before for sure, but where should people start when they want to think of day trading? Can they kind of just go and practice on their own? Or is there like a place to, is there a few things you got to learn first before they jump into day trading? Yeah, I mean, it's way easier now compared to 15 years ago when I started. There's so many courses, the YouTube, tons of free information. But I think the number one thing that everybody should do is trade on a simulator. That is the most number one thing uh, that everybody has to. And then I have to get rid of that ego that's saying that, oh, yeah, you know, I can figure it out or I don't need a simulator or, you know, or my friends are making money. I can just start working to get rid of that FOMO and ego. Just go into the simulator and see if you can make money consistently. That's the most important part. If you can't make money consistent on a simulator, there's no way that you can make money on a live account. You know, if you can make money on a simulator, still there's no guarantee that you can make live trading. But if you can't even make money in the simulator, there's no way that you can actually make money in a real account. I'm sure people are gonna to wanna to ask about your method. And I know you speak with this, so Michael Thomas told me he met you at the Trader Expo in Las Vegas, I think a few months ago. Um, you told him about VWAP, and I was kind of curious to see how you use VWAP for trading and a bit more kind of like why you think it's a good tool for people who especially day trade or kind of want to trade stocks. Yeah, I think I should start actually creating a video about VWAP because I have a couple of webinars on VWAP and they're old now. I have to actually, uh, I think I should, uh, uh, I should create one. So the VWAP is uh, the line in the intraday trading, so day trading, that shows the balance of the power between buyers and sellers. So I use it at the market to open to uh, get a good entry for long or short, depending on when it's crossing the VWAP or not. If, for example, trades below the VWAP at the open in the first five, 10 minutes, and it really with volume comes and passes the VWAP, it means that the balance of the power between buyers and sellers has changed, so I can go long above the VWAP. And then I use it also as my stop loss. So if I lose the VWAP, I just take the, uh, 
loss and come out of it. So mostly for me is uh, evaluation of the balance of the power between buyers and sellers. And I use it as uh, entry signal and also stop loss. Have you seen traders who see, use this in other markets like Forex? Or do you think that's only a specific to stocks? I think it, uh, it's a specific to a stocks. Um, if you look at it fundamentally, I know people are using it for uh, even on the daily chart and uh, on our markets. But fundamentally, volume weighted average price is important for institutional traders during the day. So the whole reason that it exists was for institutional traders to look at it and then they measure their entry and exits based on the VWAP. Uh, but the mathematical formula, you can apply it in other markets uh, and have that extra indicator, but I think it's are meaningless. There is no meaning behind it, in my opinion. So it's very important for day trading. I think somewhere around the last interview, maybe the one before that we did, you published a book about trading psychology, which I think is a big topic that people need to pay more attention to. Tell me a bit more about how you combine, especially psychology into day trading. How does that work out? Like, why do you think that psychology plays a big role for, I guess, day trading, but also like any kind of trading? What's a billion dollar question, like psychology and day trading? I don't think anyone has any specific answer to that. You have to work uh, through that, through the whole career. And it's not only trading. The psychology makes a huge important thing in any high-performing field. Like, for example, professional athletes. That's a high-performing field. You have to go into the competition. You have to be always the best in that time. So any field that uh, you have to be uh, perfect at a certain time, the psychology makes a huge important uh, uh, element in that. the, the most important part about psych, uh, psychology and trading is our relationship with money. You know, the fear and greed, the main two forces that uh, uh, takes over our, our, our uh, proper decision-making process. So when you're actually dealing with a loss or you are actually expecting money, like this uh, uh, formal that you have, the fear of missing out, the greed that you have, uh, these are the things that... Uh, impact your decision. The most important thing for uh, psychology is I think you have to remember that you have to separate three things, investing, from trading, and even gambling. Like these, are, the, each of them requires a different mindset. And we discuss that a lot in the, in, in the books and also in our community that, you know, sometimes I play, I make a trade just for as a gambling. I know, well, let's see what happens just to be fun or part of the history. That's kind of that gambling mentality. And it's okay if you have that. But you have to know that, okay, I'm doing this as part of like fun process of the trading. I want to just throw a thousand dollars in there and see what's going to happen. But you have to be ready for it. You have to have plan for it. And you have to make sure that you're playing within your budget for that. And then you have trading that requires certain rules. And then your emotion have to be very, 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 uh, you know, little impact on your trading rules. Uh, over time, you get experience, so that intuition is coming. Okay, I should take that trade, but then I oh, should that take that trade. It shouldn't be based on the fear of missing out or based on fear, but based on experience that you think that you feel something is right and you should make that trade. And of course, investing that requires a really a patient mindset and uh, again, sticking to the fundamentals that you have in your uh, investing. I think people see you these days and they see you as a good trader. You've been trading day trading for a very long time now. Uh, you like in super good health, you're climbing mountains and everything. But I think people understand like you you went through the phase of like not having that, and you had to work to get there. I know you. I saw one of your posts on uh, I think it was Twitter a few a few weeks back where you talk about like your how you came to trading and like what what things you had to do and like the the, the health changes you had over the, the past few years. Tell me more about like how you how you got there, and, like what you were before, I guess trading and how you changed your life to uh, go to trading and kind of be in better health. I generally have uh, the mentality of, uh, you know, overachiever. I try to always be the best at whatever I do. I climb Mount Everest. Like, I think that just shows that, you know, you find something the tallest and try to climb on that. Uh, and I think people who are really successful in trading, they have that mentality of the uh, being, achieving something. So they don't take no as an answer. Like, I threw all my whole life and I look at it, uh, uh, I, I I didn't take no as an answer. Like I I, I was from I'm from Iran. I said okay, I'm, fuck it, I'm gonna go to the West, and I you know apply for university. I just kept you know going up the ladder, all the things that I did. Looking back at it, you know, so wow, what an energy and drive I had. So that mentality 
uh, is important to have because trading is not easy. It's probably one of the most difficult things that you've ever tried to start in your life. So having that mentality is important. You don't need to climb Mount Everest, but you need to have the mentality of overcoming the challenges and don't take no as an answer and try to figure this uh, thing out. Like I'm living in Vancouver right now and I'm living in a very nice apartment. When I was a student, I was always uh, talking with my, one of my friends, that, why is everything so expensive and why I can't buy a house in Vancouver? Like talking about 20 years ago. And this is what he told me. He said that the problems are not the prices here. The problem is your salary or our salary. He was also a student. So try to fix that part. You can't just, just be annoyed about the Vancouver prices. So try to try to change uh, your surroundings. Don't talk about oh, uh, why everything is so expensive. Try to see how you can actually make it uh, make more money. You know that mentality, just that switch of the mentality is very very important. I think why you're fat, why you're not healthy. Just try to change it. You know a lot of times that not having this uh, um, the victim mentality is very important in my opinion and in life too. Like if you want to be an entrepreneur, you should have that mentality. Do you feel like traders need to get this before they start trading or can they develop this over time? And how do you actually develop that kind of mentality? I think it's, it passes through the life and family. I don't think it's something that uh, a lot of people can actually change overnight. Uh, but definitely is a skill that you can work on. I don't think the go-getter people are the ones that uh, uh, are born like that. I mean, but definitely you can, you know, just uh, have this mentality built from the small things, small habits, from the time that you sleep, what you eat, the amount of alcohol that you consume, everything, you know, from that you can actually um, change. And then you see that it trickles down into your life. So it's very important. Lifestyle and uh, trading success, I think they're very, very correlated. You know, having that discipline in, in your life also helps you discipline in, uh, in, in trading. Okay, so this is going to be a good question, a good point. I see a lot of people who reach out to me, they probably reach out to you the same, asking for how can they be disciplined in trading? What can they do to stick to their strategy better, take the right trades, like really be able to get disciplined in trading? So what do you tell them in that case? I think try to lose weight. I think that's one thing. Just try to come up with a plan to lose weight. Fasting is probably one of the best ones. Try to start intermittent fasting or fasting and try to become, uh, to control your health. If you, if you, and which directly impacts your life and energy and motivation and everything. So that's one thing. To set a goal for yourself that I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to you know, change something in my habit. That will impact, uh, I think, in their uh, trading success as well. Because now your mind is set on following the rules to, toward positivity. I think people have to understand that they cannot really force discipline that much. Like, yes, you can, like, of course, be motivated and like, try to make it work. But... You cannot just force yourself to take the right trades, or like be at the charts and like do this and do that all the time. You gotta have the right habits, the right strategies, the right things, the right preparation in place to be able to do that better. Yeah, I think it all goes back into the small habits. Like I know there's a really good book called uh, Atomic Habits. Uh, it's, uh, is it Atomic Habits? Yeah. So it talks about how habits, small habits, actually um, uh, impacts your uh, day-to-day life in the bigger goals. Having that habit uh, fix, like from waking up putting up your bed, that's nothing in life, you know, that you can you always come back and you go into the bed. But just setting it up, that sh- puts the dis- your, your tone for your life that, okay, I have to stick these good rules. In I, I don't like a lot of rules in my life, but a lot of them are good to, to set you uh, towards success. And they say that ha- that's how you do anything. It's that's how you do everything. Like these are small things really matter in, in every big decision that you have. What are some of the rules that you set for yourself? Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. I'm actually not a very uh, clean uh, person, so I don't make my bed and stuff. So, uh, but I do have one rule uh, to have very good exercise uh, during the day. So I run every day. That is one rule that uh, I never cross. And it's very important for me. Like my diet, not 100%. I'm, my, I'm, I'm kind of a messy person but I get at least six days of running uh, uh, a week. And that's one of the rules that really, really, really important for me. So uh, physical exercise is very important for me. And it is a rule, I'm pushing myself. Who wants to go run in the rain and cold? But I, I push myself because I know how important it is. Uh, so now we're in a point where we have crypto who's 
in the bull market again, people might be tempted to jump from like, let's say stocks, cryptos, they want to be a lot more like what is action, what is like the, the new shiny object. You tell people to kind of go into that, into these new markets and kind of try to trade that, or you just recommend them to stick to what they already know when stick to stocks or, or what you do and what you stick to? No, I stick to what I know. And I think one of the reasons that I'm super uh, successful in trading, at least I consider myself, is that I stick to what I know and I don't get distracted by uh, these kind of things. Uh, especially crypto was very difficult because, uh, you know, you had to have a different trading platform, different trading accounts. You have to, you know, everything else was different. Now, with all these ETFs and everything, you can direct them uh, exactly right at, uh, in your own trading platform with Interactive Brokers. It's much easier. But... Uh, if the pattern uh, is there for me, I would trade it inside my Interactive Brokers account. I've never done that, but I can see that if, for example, a Bitcoin ETF is giving exactly the pattern that I'm looking for, there's no difference between that and AMD or NVIDIA or Tesla. So I'm just uh, sticking to what uh, you know I know. But I, I, and I think it will stay the same. I, I would never, if there's another instrument coming a financial instrument that coming and say it's good for trading, I would just wait until interactive brokers or offers that through their platform and I trade at that. And I think it's very important to stick to what you know and don't get distracted with uh, uh, distractions because there's so many financial instruments that you can trade. Like Forex and you know now futures and you know crypto and everything. Stick to what you know and you build your strategy around it. Yeah, I can see how that's tough for some people who want to Let's say like stock doesn't work for them. They want to jump to something else to make money faster or to get results faster. And then it just doesn't work and then they kind of keep jumping. So definitely. Yeah, I know. And no matter how many times you tell them, but you have, they have to go and experience that. I did it too. Like even the stocks, for example, you can do the penny stocks. You can do the blue chip stocks. So, but you have to go through the experience, get to all of that, uh, you know, uh, frustrations until you reach that point. You know, like parents, how many times our parents told us something but, you know, we still do that. You, you got to go. That's human nature. You got to go uh, and do that. Hopefully, you come to this realization. So you stop doing that after a couple of experience, you know, have this self-reflection uh, and come to that point that, okay, this is what I should do. This is what I should stick to. And, you know, these are the people that I follow. <clears throat> what are some common mistakes that you see traders ask you for help with? Like, what are some of the things people struggle with the most? And did they change over the years? It's still like the same that... Also go with like five years ago or do these things change is like different challenges traders have now no I, th I think it's the same challenge like we have this peak capital trading boot camp we we'll give them account and i can see all of the pnl they're all good at trading they're all not good at uh, keeping the money so that blowing up their account uh, is something that there are usually one or two days uh, they blow up their accounts uh, it's it's a paper money but we can see we can track it we can see it that um that the psychology and how you treat your account uh, is the number one and it will be number one thing. Everybody can make money, but very few people know how to keep the money. That's a good point. What are some things people can do watching this to uh, actually try to become better at keeping the money? Because everyone's focused on like the strategies to set up the entry, like taking the right trades. But what can they do to get better at keeping the money? I think setting up a rule around your trading and life is really important. Like for me, for example, I trade one hour and then I'm shutting it down. Close the laptop if I'm traveling. If I'm in the office, I walk away. My trading office is different from my work office. I don't even have trading platform in my work uh, uh, office uh, computer. So <clears throat> I just walk away. I am not looking at that market because there is something going on. And over trading is the number one thing that people get that drop just having a rule around it i trade only for one hour take or you know loss or gain it doesn't matter one hour a day or two hours a day depending on what you're doing for me it's the, from 8 30 to 9 uh, sorry 9 30 to 11 uh on the new york time and after 11 i have to hand over my chat room time that i have to someone else so it's not that I can stick around and people don't like it when you know, i go over their time so it's having that rule is super important I could see how some people would say, oh, well, like oh, you can make so much better results if you traded like eight hours a day or something. Tell me why that wouldn't be the case and why you prefer to stick to just one hour. Because uh, it exposes you to uh, over trading. So in mountaineering, what we do in the climbing, there's one rule that we have is that uh, limiting your time into the dangerous area. 
Like for example, we do cross the areas that are avalanche prone, or you, we do cross ice falls and uh, seracs that you know they can fall on you. But what we do is the rule is over there. You have to go fast. You don't camp. You don't do picnic down there. So you just cross as fast as possible. So the amount of time that you are exposed to that environment is limited. So when you're sitting behind your station for eight hours, even though you don't plan to trade, you get tempted to make that trade. It's again that again bedding and things and it has like it's always you know like working on a restaurant doesn't is not really helpful for people who want to lose weight, you know, because you're constantly exposed to all these foods and everything. So I think um, just like an addiction and trading is an addiction. So you have to distance yourself from things that does impact you. And yeah, so just shut it down. Don't be exposed yourself to this. Like, like an alcoholist, uh, like someone who is alcoholic, you know, don't buy drinks. You know, don't be around drinks so you can actually get tempted. That's a good way to put it, definitely. It's a good analogy, definitely, for sure. Is there anything else that you see coming up these days or anything you want to talk about that you think traders should be aware of or should kind of try to get better at these days? No, I think there's a lot of potential. There is a lot of, a lot of potential. Like I encourage people to come into the financial markets so I'm the perfect example. You are the perfect example of person that, you know, first time that we talk about like 10 years ago, traveling the world and, you know, trading. I don't think you're making huge amount of money from trading, but you found a way to consistently uh, make money and then you're traveling the world. I'm, I'm like that as well. So I'm traveling the world. People who follow me on social media. There is so much potential, but you have to do it right. It's very important. You have to do it right. It's not that I didn't get to where I am overnight. You didn't get where you are overnight. And just come to the financial market, read about it. A lot of people are telling me, Andrew, I want to be like you. Where do I start? And I said, read the book. And they never finish the book. They never finish the book. They, they come to me and say, hey, can you give me this access? Can you give me this? And I say, yes, I'm doing it. Read the book. If you can't finish a book, how do you want to become a trader? You know, they never do that. So they start, uh, read the books and uh, educate yourself. There's so much potential in it. You can do it. Uh, just look at uh, people around you, you can do it, just do it right. I'm sure you get the same question too, of people asking what's your secret to be successful in trading. So if you could summarize that secret into a few sentences, what would you say that that secret is? I think, I don't know. I mean, luck is the uh, very, very important element of uh, success. I, I got lucky. Uh, I got lucky that I could survive the early losses. Um, I was lucky that I'm working in, I was working in Vancouver. The time zone is perfect for someone who wants to learn to trade in a stock market because the market opens at 6.30 and then you finish by 8, 8.30, you can go to work, you can have, it's amazing. And I did wake up for years at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning, it's hard, but I did it because I had to drive. So luck is a very important element. Where you live is a very important element. I mean, you can't change it if you, if the time zone doesn't work for you, that's, um, um, it's out of your control. But for me, the luck was very important. So, and in general, success in life, I think it's a very important part of it. Luck, you can't control that. But overall is I really wanted the lifestyle. I really had, I really demanded this lifestyle that I have. And I dreamed about it. And having that drive, and the fact that I'm, I'm gonna get it because I really want it, I think it makes a huge impact on your success. Awesome, definitely a lot there. Yeah, we definitely cover a lot. So. Uh... I appreciate the advice you give to people here. Uh, definitely a lot to, to cover. And uh, people can definitely reach out to you. What can I connect with you or find out more about the work you do? Yeah, social media is the best way. Like, I mean, all social media, um, Instagram, uh, X, uh, uh, Facebook, I'm not super active on it. But uh, yeah, YouTube, uh, anywhere, just, you know, drop me a note uh, and leave a comment and I'll get back to you guys. And uh, I do have Meetup all around the world when I'm traveling. So I announce it. If you are, just come for a drink. I'll buy you a beer. And... Uh, we chat about uh, your trading journey. Pretty cool. So Bearable Trader, I think, is where you have everything, right? Yeah, BearableTraders.com is my website and our community. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew, for this time. I hope we can catch up soon and discuss trading again. I think it's pretty cool to catch up and see what you're doing and look forward to see your, uh, your next missions for sure.